Okay, so the last week's le uh, lecture is kind of like a cross between revisiting some of the stuff which you've done in term one and also having a look at the next step in the graphics pipeline, which is called clipping. And last week we looked at how we take your world space, which is your 3D space, we project it using perspective projection, and we also squash and squeeze it so that your um, screen space is what we call a unit cube. A unit cube means you have a cube where each corner is one away from the um, one away in the x, y, and z direction uh, from the origin. Okay, so just to recap. Okay, just to recap. Uh, sorry, that's not coming up very well. Usually, I can just do this. Uh, give me a couple of seconds. Oh dear. Oh, what's happened there? Who knows? Normally, that. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we have what we call a viewing thrust room. Now, the thrust room, think of it like a cone, but we've had square sides. Okay, and this is your eye. Okay, and what you're doing is you're looking at a screen. You're looking at your computer screen, which is given by this, or denoted by this rectangle here, and with bottom left coordinates LB, or left and bottom, and right top coordinates of R and T. And as you're looking into your 3D environment, the, the um, area or the region you can see is defined by it is given within this thrust room. So the screen represents the sort of front or the closest part of the virtual world you can see. And uh, we also have a plane at the back. Okay, this is called the far viewing plane. And so we can't see forever, there has to be some, some limit. And on the sides, we have this sort of slope, each, we've got the slope inside. So that's what you can see through the screen into your 3D virtual world. And what we do is you transform that sort of pressure and that view of Russian shape so it's a cube. So imagine you're looking down, uh, down from above onto the view of Russian. So it looks something like this. Okay. Uh, your near plane, which is your projection plane, is located, well this should actually be F, and that's F max, I've, I've, I've changed the, um, I've changed the variables I use to um, fit in with Killian, so I think in your notes that should be F, and that's F max. Okay, and what we do is we convert it to this unit Q. Okay, so this, this is looking down on the world space coordinates, that's your X, that's your Z, and your Y is coming up, so uh, it's quite difficult to represent 3D, but Y is coming up, up, out at you. And this is the transform view of us so again, this is your Z, this is your X, and notice it's all within the unit cube. So your X goes from minus one to plus one, your Z goes from minus one to plus one, and the Y would also go from minus one to plus one. How we do that is this matrix here. Again, I've got some slight changes into the way. Uh, I think in your notes it should be uh, correct. Yeah, the page 16, bottom of page 16, Okay, I've used F and R and F and C, which is uh, more correct. Okay, so this is a matrix which we can calculate. We multiply this matrix by your world space homogeneous coordinates. So after you've aligned your world space down the direction of U vector, that's the assignment four. Okay, so you have some coordinates. That will be four, four rows by however many vertices you have. Could be, could be hundreds, could be thousands. You multiply that by this matrix, and that will combine <coughs> perspective projection and that scaling. Okay, so this will combine perspective projection and the transformation of the viewer for into that unit square. So you only have to do one matrix multiplication. That will give you homogeneous coordinates. Uh, screen space coordinates we call these are hence the subscript S. So we've got X, S, y, uh, y, S, Z, S, 
And we've got this final one, which is WS. Now that final one is what we call a scaling factor. To go from homogeneous coordinates to Cartesian coordinates, we would simply divide X, S, Y, S, Z, S, and W, S by <coughs> W, S. And we get what's called the plotting coordinates. We get Cartesian X, Y, and Z coordinates. Okay, so that will, has the effect of um, taking a 3D world space and giving you your screen space coordinates. How do we calculate, well, I just called it uh, uh, R and T. So R is the right-hand coordinate of your view of frustrum. Okay, and that's just given by, uh, well, I've got N tan, but there should be F tan. Sorry, sorry about the um, change. I just changed it so it matches what Killian uses. So you take your field of view angle, which is how sort of wide you can see. So narrow field of view, you only see sort of a narrow strip. Wider, you get to see more of it. Divide that by two, find the tangent of it, multiply it by, well, it should be F. Multiply it by this distance here. Okay, hopefully in the notes, I got, I got you to change that last week. Aspect ratio is the width to height ratio of your screen. Okay, so normal sort of your, your average television now is 16.9. So 16 wide, 9 high. So that's your, your aspect ratio. And your top coordinate is calculated by dividing <coughs> your R by your aspect ratio. So that gives you um, that gives you R and T. So then that could be fed into this, okay, which is given on page 18. Okay. Okay, I don't mind you coming in late, but don't distract the cars. Okay, so on the left we have your aligned world space. And I've also put on the viewing sort of fresh, and that's what that's what it would look like. Okay. On the right, I've multiplied all of those coordinates by that uh, transformation matrix, and it, you'll get the um, uh, perspective sort of view of that village, um, and that's what we call your screen space, and that's what you plot to the screen. It's a three D space, but we only plot x and y coordinates. Okay. Because obviously, on a screen, you've only got x and y. And that will give you the, uh, it will look 3D to you. Okay, so that's what we looked at last week. From that, um, your seventh assignment is all about clipping. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. Now, once the world space has been projected to the screen space, some aspects of the world space won't be visible. So what we would need to do is remove any aspects which we can't see. Anything outside of that view infrastructure, <coughs> anything past it. Okay, and this is called clipping. So any polygons outside are ignored. Any polygons half outside are cut. So that um, the part which is inside is retained, the part which is outside is ignored. And there are three sort of main methods to do this. Cyrus Beck algorithm, Cohen Sutherland, and Sutherland Hodgman. Don't worry about remembering these different names, okay? In the, um, in the assignment, obviously you can look it up. In an exam, I make it obvious which one it is. Okay, so don't worry about having to remember which one's which. I never do. As you can see, in a minute when I'll give you an activity, I've actually got them uh, mixed up in the names. So don't, don't worry about remembering those names. Okay, so this is a sort of typical example problem. Here I've got what I've called a clip region. That could be anything, let's say it's your screen, or it's a window. When, you, when you're using windows, each window would be a clip region. And here I put on uh, five sort of example lines. Now that's the problem. You've got eyes. You could easily see which requires clipping and which doesn't. Okay, so if you have a look at each of these lines, line A to B, as you can see, it's entirely within that clip region. So we don't have to do anything with that. We say, okay, that's the rule. C to D starts off inside, because C is inside our clip region. D is outside. So at some point along C to D, it crosses 
um, the edge of our clip region. So what we say is we clip the outside point, which in this case is D. So this point here, we clip that along the line where it intersects with the top edge. So instead of drawing C to D, we draw C to D prime, which is the clipped point. E to F never, well, both E and F are outside of our tip region, but it never crosses into our tip region. So we, we just ignore that. Uh, we, it's what we call rejected. We just, we just ignore it from now on. G to H, well, both G and H are outside, but at some point along the line, it enters the clip region and exits again. So what we do is we'll clip G to G prime, so that's where it intersects with the bottom edge. We'll clip H to H prime, where the uh, line intersects with the right-hand edge. And we'll draw G prime to H prime. Okay, so even though G and H are both outside, at some point it does pass with, within our clip region. I to J, again, both of these are outside, but unlike G to H, the line I to J never enters our clip region. So that's good job. For us, that's easy. Quite easy to see where, where it crosses, uh, clip that region, that's fine. Computers don't have eyes. Computers are very good at calculations, arithmetic, but they're rubbish at sort of uh, visual things. I mean, we, we can have a camera, we can put a camera on a computer and have some form of uh, visual uh, recognition, but that's, they're very poor at doing that. So the challenge is, how do we get the computer to determine which is clipped and which isn't? So that's what a problem is. And the key to doing this or from one of the methods is calculated how far away each of our endpoints of our line is away from the edge of a window. So this is essentially a distance from a point to a plane. So it's kind of like revisiting what we did with intersection of lines and planes. Okay, so what I'm going to define, I'm going to define the distance D as a perpendicular distance of a point from a plane. So here on this diagram, I've got a plane, which is just happens to be horizontal. The plane is defined by some point, doesn't matter where it is, as long as it's on the plane. So I put P, and the normal vector, N, which points perpendicularly away from that plane. Okay, and we mentioned last week, we could have normal vectors pointing uh, two directions. The graphics, we always assume they're unique. So there's only one normal vector per plane. So that point P is on the plane. This point Q is somewhere else, somewhere else in space. And that distance from Q to the plane, uh, well, perpendicular distance, so if I was to draw a line from Q to the closest point on the plane, it would be a right angle. So that point, that distance is going to be D. So notice I put it up here. And I can form a right angle triangle. So I, have a, I can form a vector from P to Q. And so if that's my hypo, uh, hypotenuse of my right angle triangle, the length D along the vector N is the adjacent side. So I've got hypotenuse, <coughs> I've got a length of the hypotenuse, I've got a length of the adjacent side, so therefore I can use the cosine ratio. Remember Sokotella? Okay, CAH, so cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. And I use that, well, we can use that along with the definition of a dot product. So definition of a dot product is, I've got two vectors, A and B. If I calculate their magnitudes, I find the product of their magnitudes and multiply by that, by the angle between them. Okay, so if I combine these two results, so I've got the definition of a dot product, the angle between them, well in this case, we've got a right angle triangle. We've got two vectors, n and the vector going from p to q, and theta is the angle between them. Okay, well, the adjacent side of my right angle triangle is d. The hypotenuse is the magnitude of point q minus point p. So that's that vector going from p to q. So if I replace the cosine in the dot product definition by that cosine, rearrange a little bit, 
and we get this um, statement. So the distance, q minus p, multiplied by the unit vector n. You can see it's a unit vector, so it's got a little hat on it. Okay. So to find the unit vector, you just divide n by its magnitude. Okay, so that gives us a perpendicular distance from q to a point defined by p and n. <coughs> Okay, so how does that help us with clipping? Well, the sign, whether it's positive or negative, of D will tell us whether a line needs clipping. So, uh, it tells us whether it's in front or behind a window edge. So, when D is negative, Q is what we say behind the edge. What do I mean by that? If I just go back to this diagram, in this case, the normal vector is pointing upwards. Okay, so all the space in front of the uh, plane is considered up here, the way the normal vector is pointing. The space below, opposite to, uh, to the way the normal vector is pointed, is considered behind the plane. Now imagine your window edge, it's got four edges, each edge is a plane. Okay. And the plane, the normal vector will be facing into the, uh, in, the centre of the window. So, if you consider each edge of your window a plane, and you have a front and back side of that plane. So, if your distance d is negative, it means it's behind your window edge. If it's equal to zero, it means it's bang on, it means it's on that plane, on the window edge. And if it's positive, it's in front. So, if you've got a line going from A to B, and you calculate the distances of A and B to each uh, to an edge, so let's call it D A and D B. We have four possible combinations. Okay, first combination, both are negative. So that means A is behind and B is behind, and we do not draw A to B because they're both behind. The second case is if A is negative and B is positive. So in this case, A would be be behind, B B would be in front. So what we would need to do there is clip A to the edge, call it A dash or A prime. If it was the opposite way around, A is in front, B is behind, <coughs> then we'd need to clip, clip B to B dash. If they're both in front, do nothing. They don't require clipping. Then we'd have to do the same for each, each edge of a window. So how do we calculate that clip point? So let's say if I've got this problem here. So I've got, a, I've got a plane, I've got my point A which is in front, I've got my point B which is behind. I need to clip B so it lies on that plane. Now you've done this before, it was with the um, shooting of projectile in um, the Simon 2 I think it was. So you've actually done this before. Very, very similar. Okay, uh, it, we, we do do a little bit of a simplification. Using the vector equation of a plane, so uh, zero is equal to b dash minus p dot n. Now that's the distance. So we want distance between the plane and b dash to be equal to zero. We don't know what b dash is. That's what we're trying to find out. So we can use the vector equation of a line. So b dash is equal to a, so that's where you're starting from, plus t times b minus a. Think of b minus a as your v. Remember, r is uh, p plus e t. That's exactly the same. It's b dash is a plus t times b minus a. b minus a just happens to be your v. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sort of simplify that slightly on the projector just to show you where that comes from. All right. Okay, so we have zero is equal to B dash minus P dot normal vector. Okay, so B is where you want to end up. Okay, so B is where you want to end up. I'm just going to make sure that the... Uh, right. Okay. 
okay? And we've also got the expression for B dash. So this is our expression for B dash. We don't know what T is. And remember with the work you did in assignment two, intersection between a line and plane, that's what you've got to find out. You've got to work out what T is. Okay. So T must satisfy the first equation. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's call that equation one and equation two. I'm going to substitute <coughs> equation two into equation one. So what we get is we've got zero is equal to B prime, which is this one, A plus T, B minus A, which is this, minus P, and that dot product of our normal vector. Okay, so I need to rearrange that to make T the subject. Okay, um, can do can do a little bit of uh, simplification here. Okay, what I can do is I can group A and P together, and B and A together. So what I've done there is I just put A and A and P together and B and A together, just to just to make the algebra sim uh, simpler. Okay, well dot product is distributive. Okay, so that means I can split this square bracket up. Okay, so if I split the square bracket up, I get a minus p dot n plus t b minus a dot n. Okay, so I'm getting somewhere now. I need to make t the subject. So I'm going to take t over to the left side. So I'm going to subtract this second term from both sides. So this t b minus a dot n. What I'm going to do is subtract it from both sides. So that has the effect. So if I multiply b by minus 1, I get minus b. If I multiply a by minus 1, I get plus a. OK. Then all we have to do is divide. Remember, a dot product is just a number. So we can divide by that number, and we get t is equal to a minus p dot n all over a oops, minus b dot n. OK, well, I'm going to do something a bit further than that. OK, that gives us t. But we've already calculated for clipping. We've already calculated dA and dB. To actually get to the stage, we said, OK, do we need to clip? So we calculate dA and dB. Then we do all this, okay, we say, okay, let's calculate T. But we've already made these calculations. This top one here is actually DA. Okay, so that's A minus P dot N is DA. Which we've already calculated to get to that stage. So once we've got DA, no point in redoing the work. We've already got it. At the bottom, what we have is actually if I could expand this out, I've got a minus p dot n minus b minus p dot n. If I was to uh, expand this out, I'd get minus p dot n plus p dot n. So they cancel out. But though these two, that's da, <coughs> that's db. So that is the same as saying da over da minus db. Oops. Okay, so, the, so this one here, that denominator is exactly the same as that denominator. Haven't changed anything. Okay, um, but this is dA, because this is a distance from A to the uh, <coughs> plane. This is a distance from B to the plane. So T is simply dA divided by dA minus dB. We've already calculated, already calculated dA already calculated db, so what's the point in doing all that work again? We just got a simple division. Okay, so that's, if you're confused where equation 2.11 came from, it's just that little extra step there. Right, so that gives us the result at the bottom of that slide. Thank <laughs> you.
So we have a method now. Okay, I'm going to call it an algorithm, and I've presented it in such a way here. This is kind of like the sort of technical or the sort of proper way of presenting algorithms. It can sometimes look a bit, um, can sometimes look a bit sort of confusing, but I just talk you through this. Okay, so this is an algorithm, a series of steps which gives us a solution. Now the problem we have is we want to clip some lines, so that's our problem. Okay, so we got a problem where we we know we have a line that goes from A to B, a point on the plane P, and a normal vector N. Okay, so how do we go about doing this? First, we calculate calculate dA and dB, and we also calculate um, T is dA over dA minus dB. We calculate dA, calculate dB, calculate T. And then we've got uh, some logic. So if dA and dB are both less than zero, what I've done here is we set B is equal to A. So the value of B takes on the value of A. That means both your start point and end point are the same. So you've got a line of zero length. So when we pass that through to something which draws a line, it won't draw a line, it'll just draw nothing. If A is positive and B is negative, we calculate, we set B is equal to the clip point. Else, if it's the other way around, we calculate A is equal to the clip point. Okay, that's the algorithm. Okay, a series of steps which gives us a solution. Okay, so what I want you to do is I've got an activity for you now where you uh, have a go at doing it. Okay, so for the next sort of half hour or something, we're going to have a look at this Sorry, if that algorithm. So if, if by a miracle this YouTube thing is working and you're watching it, you might want to fast forward it for half hour because you won't be able to see anything. Um, I know Killian does actually point his camera at that, doesn't he? Actually, if you try and do that. Uh, uh, oh, no, it's okay. Just have to put the uh, solutions up again. Okay, so we've got, I've given you the coordinates of four lines, and I've given you a <coughs> clip region. Now, this particular clip region isn't, uh, it's not parallel to the x and y axis, it's sort of on a slant of it. Just to show you that this works for anything. Okay, so you don't have to have a clip region which is parallel to the x and y axis. So what I want you to do is clip the lines joining uh, these coordinates, so we've got four lines, to this clip region. Okay, so what you're going to need to do is that each edge of that clip region, you need to calculate the normal vector and determine whether clipping is required. Okay, so here we've got an edge, let's call that N1. Now, N1 is that edge. Anybody tell me what the normal vector to that is? So we want something which just goes a little bit to the, to the left, a bit more up. And the, uh, the x component of the normal vector is found using the y components of the endpoints. Uh, sorry, the x component of the endpoint. 
uh, sorry, the Y component of the endpoint. Okay, so we have, let's say we go in anti-clockwise around this click region. So for the first one, that's where we start and that's where we end. What we do is we take the start Y coordinate, which is two, and subtract the end Y coordinate, which is one. Two minus one, so that gives us one. Then we take the end X coordinate and subtract the start X coordinate. So six minus one gives us five. So you're normal because it's in a 2D space, because it's um, perpendicular to that line, your X component of the normal vector is found using the Y component of the endpoints. That makes sense. So we know we, we, we sort of know we're right because our this normal vector goes a little bit along in the x direction and a lot more out in the y direction. What about let's call that n two? So what about that normal vector? Same thing again. Okay. So we take the start x coordinate, which is six. Oh, sorry, start y coordinate, which is one. To subtract the end y coordinate, which is four, so we have minus three, and then we take the end x coordinate, which is seven, and subtract the start x coordinate, which is six. You kind of know if you got it right or wrong. You just have a look at the okay, which way it points in. Okay, and do the same for the other two. Okay, so what we got here, we've got, we got 7 minus 6, we've got 2 minus 7. And what we've got here, we've got 2 minus 1, <coughs> and we've got 2 minus 6. Okay, those are our four normal vectors. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, oh, yes, number three. So we're going from seven, four to two, six. Okay, so we have seven. Uh, where are we? Sorry, four, yes. Sorry, my mistake. Just double check my other ones then. So we've got um, four minus six, two minus seven. And we'll have 6 minus 2, 1 minus 2. So, uh, oh, yes. So, minus, minus. Sorry, 6 minus 2 is 4. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Easy. Just going to double check mine now. So we've got four across, one down. We've got minus two across, minus five down. Minus three, one, one, five. Okay. Right, so let's call this one A and that one B for each of these. Okay, so for side one, okay, so you've got to do this for, for all, the, all four of your sides. So for side one, B A, Okay, it's going to be 2, 1, minus, oops, sorry, that's, so it's going to be 2, 1, minus any point along this line. So we could either take 1, 2, or 6, 1, <coughs> we might as well take 1, 2. Okay, so that's your A, that's the point which is there. This point here is any point along this line, which is one, two. We dot product that with the normal vector <coughs> of the line. Notice I'm not bothering with using a unit normal because our T is found by dividing DA by DA minus DB. So that just cancels out all of the magnitudes. Okay, so what have we got? We've got two minus one, 1 minus 2, 
top product of 1, 5, so we have 1 minus 5, which is minus 4. So that tells me that A is behind that edge. Where is A, by the way? 2, 1. Yeah, so 2, 1 is there. Does that make sense? This point is behind that line. Okay, what about DB? So B is <coughs> 5, 3. So 5, 3 is about there. So we've got 5, 3 minus the point on the line, which is 1, 2, dot product of 1, 5. Okay, so that's going to be 4, 1, dot product of 1, 5. So it's 4 times 1, plus 1 times 5, 9. So if DA is minus 4, TB is 9. And we can calculate T now. So T is equal to DA is minus 4 over minus 4 minus 9. So what's that? 4 over 13. So we've got T. Once you've got T, we can calculate the clipped point. Okay, so, so my clip point, I need to clip A. So A dash is equal to my start point A plus T, which is 4 over 13 minus B minus A. Oh, sorry, times B minus A. Okay, so what we got here, we've got 2, 1, plus 5 minus 2 is 3, so we've got 12 over 13. We've got 3 minus 1 is 2, so that's 8 over 13. So what have we got? Uh, 26 plus 12 over 13, which is 3. Uh, and we've got 21 over 13, which is kind of simplified. So that gives us our coordinates of our clip point. Um, yep, so if we sketch that on, x coordinate 3, y coordinate 21 over 13, so that's that point there. So that line has then been clipped to that point. So it works, good news. Okay, what about B? So I'm going to cheat slightly. I'm going to do a vision inspection. So B has got one four. Well, part B. <coughs> so one four and six five. So six five is up there. So we've got a line that goes along. So we only need to clip it to the fourth edge. So to save us a lot of work, I'm just going to go straight to the fourth edge just to. I haven't got enough space on my page to do them all. But you can see, you'd have to check each, each one for where it crosses. So this is going to intersect with side four. So again, you calculate your distance from the start point. That's going to be one four, because that's our, because one four is our start point there. Minus any point along this line. So I might as well take 1, 2 again because 1, 2 is a point along that line. And dot product this time with the normal vector for the fourth point. Similar for DB.
Just double check my arithmetic. So six minus one is five times four is 20. Five minus two is three times minus one is 17. So DA is two, I'm oh, sorry, DA is minus two, so that's behind. DB is 17, which is the plus, so that's in front. So our T is equal to minus two divided by minus two minus 17. Two over 19. Okay, so then we need to clip A to the edge. So if we clip A to the edge, so the start coordinates of 1, 4, left 2 over 19, 6, 5, minus 1, 4. That might simplify. 78 over 19 simplify? Four. No. Is that right? We've got four plus two over 19, so that'll be 76. That'll be 76 over 19 plus two over 19, that's 78 over 19. Oh well. It's that point there. Okay, so once you get in the swing of things, it starts to get quite easy. Calculate DA, calculate DB, calculate T, and then flip whichever requires flipping. Okay, so let's have a look at part C. I'm going to have to use a separate paper there, so I've run out of room. Okay, if I part C is four one till four six. Okay, so you can see here. First, drawn those lines up. Okay, we require two two lines that need clipping. I need one for side one and another clipping to side three. So if I go one, two, three, four. Okay, so the side one, the A is four, one, minus one, two, dot product with one, five. Okay, where did I get them from? So four, one, four, one is the first coordinate. 1, 2 is that point, which is just on this line, and 1, 5 is normal vector there. Okay, so what have we got there? We've got 4 minus 1, which is 3, times 1, which is 3. 1 minus 2, which is minus uh, 1, times 5, so that's going to be minus 2. Yeah. I've got 4, 6. Minus one two dot product with one five. Okay. That's going to be three times one, which is three. 
4 times 5, which is 20, is at minus 17. Mm. Hang on, that's not right. <laughs> 4 times 5 is plus 20. Okay, so okay, so what I've done here is I've got a point at four one, which is there, and I've calculated the distance from this point to this edge. So dA is minus two. This distance from this point to this edge is twenty-three. Okay, so then dA over dA minus dB gives me two over twenty-five. Okay, so this point here, A, is split. <coughs> Uh, to this line. So we have 4, 1 plus 2 over 25, V, which is 6, 5, minus um, A, which is 4, 1. So 4, 1 plus, so what have we got here? 6 minus 4 is 2, so that's 4 over 25. 5 minus 1 is 4, so that's 8 over 25. 104 over 25, and we have uh, 33 over 25. You can calculate these in decimal if you want. If you want to do it using calculator, that's fine. Okay, so that's the bottom one clicked. So here, if I draw, well, it's going to get a bit mess messy, but if here I've clicked that point to that point there. Okay, we've also got to clip the top one. So I have to clip this point up here to this line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the original coordinates because I don't fancy messing about with those because they're nasty. So I'm going to use the initial, original coordinates of DA and DB to clip this point to this line here. The side three, okay, I'm just going to have to zoom out a bit. Okay, so, so side three, okay, DA, I'm going to use is 4, 1. So I've got 4, 1, that's minus, um, well, I need a point somewhere on this, this line, so I'm going to take 2, 6 as my point. Just... So I could have taken seven four, but two six numbers are less. So I'll take those. Dot product with the third uh, normal vector, which is minus two minus five. Okay, so that's my DA. Six five. Was it meant to be four six? I don't know. Yeah. Meant to be four six. Okay, so we the first coordinate here is a. Yeah. Second coordinate is b. Yeah. I use, I accidentally used the one from the previous question. <coughs> so instead of being four six, uh, so that's four six. Uh, that's all going to be wrong. Uh, I'm going to just scrub that and do that again. Here's a lesson for you. Always check my working out. <coughs> so here we've got 4 minus 4, which is 0. So 4 plus 0 is 0. 6 minus 1 is 5. Times 2 is 10 over 25. 10 over 25 is 2 over 5, isn't it? So 1 plus 2 over 5 is <coughs> 7 over 5. That looks a lot better than what I had. Do you understand where that 4 1 came from? Yeah. Yeah, and the 4 6. Yeah. Sorry, that was my mistake. Thanks for pointing out. Okay, let's have a look at side 3 then.
make sure I've got the uh, yeah four minus two six and that dot product which is third and DB would be four six minus two six dot product with n. So what have we got? So we've got four minus two is two times minus two is minus two. Sorry, I'm not here. Which one's wrong? Oh, no. This one. So, which one? So that's. <laughs> Have I added that, that one? Have I not added it to one? Six minus one is five. Times two over twenty-five is ten over twenty-five. So that's two fifths. Add one, seven fifths. Is that right? Okay. So let's have a look at this one. Four minus two is two. Times minus two is minus four. One minus six is minus five. Times minus five is plus. So that's twenty-one. I hope. <laughs> you guys got calculators, so you can yeah, do that. So I'm just double checking now. 4 minus 2 is minus 2 times minus 2 is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2 minus 2 is minus 4. 1 minus 6 is minus 5 times 5. 4 minus 2 is 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. 6 minus 6 is 0. Okay, so t is equal to 21 over minus 4 minus 21, <coughs> 21 over 25. So now I'm clipping b. So b is the one I clip in this case, right? So just sort of explain. Here's my b. Okay, that's my a. So I've already clipped to this point. So now I'm clipping to this point here. So B is the one that's clipped, not A. So B prime is equal to A, which is 4, 1, plus 21 over 25, times B is 4, 6, minus 4, 1. Four one plus so got four minus four is zero. Six minus one is five. So that's twenty one over five. Twenty six. Okay, so it's essentially the section between line and plane. Each of our sort of sides of our window is a plane. We calculate T, and therefore we can calculate where we clip to. For the last one, sort of, I, I, I've just sketched the start and end points for the last one. So if we just do this, so we have one five, which is there, to three eight, which is there. Well, just off the off the top, you can see from that the line isn't going to go through our bit window. If we were to go around each edge, <coughs> just, um, what we do is you cycle around each edge. And if it was clipped to the top edge, we clip to there. Can you see that bit there? Which is just outside. Then if we clip to the right edge, they're both behind. 
So once we've gone through them all, it results in, okay, we don't need to click. We, we just ignore that line because it's never, it never enters our window. Okay, so lots of sort of, um, I don't know, quite simple calculations, a dot product, a division, and then just you entering in the values into the vector equation of a line. Where is that? 4-1 is... Yeah, so 4-1 is from that A to B. So we're, we're flipping from A to B when T is 21 over 25. So that's, that's A, that's B, that's A. Sorry? Ah, so DA, so that's... So that's your A, so that's 4, 1, there. That's your B, and that's 4, 6, there. Okay, these normal vectors are, this is wrong one. these normal vectors were what we calculated earlier. So that was N3, because it's the third. That's the side 1, 2, and that's side 3. Right, so that's... The Cyrus Bex. So that's actually calculating where we need to clip. It's actually quite complicated determining what we need to clip, whether a line needs clipping or not. And what I'm going to do is now look at um, two methods which can tell us whether we need to clip or not. Okay. So I'm just going to switch back to the uh, to the slides. Okay. The first method we're going to be looking at. And I always get the name of this one wrong. Is called Cohen Sevelin. <coughs> now Cohen Sevelin uses binary numbers. Have you dealt with binary numbers before? Has anybody dealt with binary numbers before? Do you know what binary numbers are? Ones and zeros. <coughs> okay, so we're just gonna have a bit of a recap. And I'm going to teach you how to count. Okay, consider the number 1,234. Okay, so we've got one and a two and a three and a four. Okay, that that's a value. You know that value is 1,234. Where does that come from? Well, what we have is we've got 1,000s plus 200 plus three tens plus four units. So what it is, is in the digits, the location of the digit determines its value. We know that the 2 has less of a value in this number than the 1. Because that's just 200, but that means 1,000, so that's more. Okay, and in base 10, which we count with, we have 10 fingers and thumbs, we use 10 symbols 0, 3 to 9. Binary numbers... Ah, just count with base two. So, because we got we're counting in base ten, okay. The thousand column is what? Are, how many thousands we have times ten to the power of three. The hundreds column is how many hundred we have times ten to the power of two. And the power of ten decreases until we get to the units, which is four times ten to the zero. Obviously, anything to the power of zero is one. That's base 10 numbers. Now, Cohen Sutherland and computers work on binary. And these are base 2. We've got two symbols, 0 and 1. Okay. Exactly the same as base 10 numbers, the, the position of the digit determines its value. So if I had the number 1, 1, in, one in binary, that means 1 times 2 squared. Number was four, so I've got one lots of four. 
I've got one lots of 2 to the power 1, that's 1 lots of 2, and I've got 1 lots of 2 to the power 0, that's 1 lots of 1. So that's actually the number 7 in decimal. So 1, 1, 1 in binary is equal to 7 in decimal. Easy way to do it is the value of the digit on the far right is 1, and every time you step to the left, you're doubling the value of the digit. So, I mean, for example, let's grab another scrap piece of paper. Let's just make up a binary number. Okay, I've just made that up at the top of my head. Okay, let's say if I wanted to convert that. Okay, that's binary, so I'm just going to put a subscript 2 under it, just to say, okay, that's a binary number. I'm going to convert that to decimal. Easy way of doing it. You're saying, okay, that's worth one, that's worth two, that's worth four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four. So each number is worth twice that of the number to its right. <coughs> so what have I got here? I've got sixty-four plus sixteen plus eight. And uh, plus one. So we've got 64 plus 16 is 80, 88, 89. So that's how we convert from des uh, binary to decimal. Going the other way is slightly more tricky. You have to use the algorithm. <coughs> five by two each time, find the remainder. Five by two, find the remainder, etc. So you're right with des binary numbers, binary to decimal. Okay, so this next method uses binary. Um, the reason you use a binary, uh, well, one of the reasons is it's neat, and another is computers deal with binary. When you type in a sum into a computer, what, what the computer does, is it converts your decimal number to binary, does the calculation, and then converts it back from binary to decimal again. If you can avoid that, just work in binary, it's a lot quicker. So the next method uses binary numbers in what we call bit codes. Okay, so this is our window. Okay, this is our trip region, this sort of um, rectangle in the middle. And surrounding our rectangle, we've got eight regions, whether at top or bottom, left or right. So we've got these eight regions surrounded. In the middle, uh, we have a bit code of all the zeros. So we assign a bit code depending on whether a region is to the top, bottom, or right or left. Now that's not just random, randomly assigned. We have a rule. So the digit in the first bit location, that's a one if your point is above the clip region. So if you've got a point anywhere above the clip region, so the, in, in other words, in these three regions here, your first digit is going to be a 1. Second digit denotes whether you're below the clip region. So all of these three regions down here, I've got a 1 in the second <coughs> digit. Third is whether to the right. So if you look at the three regions down here, and to the right, you can see they've all got a one in the third bit location. And finally, to the left, it's the fourth bit location. So you've got a one in the fourth bit. So you can see there, using that rule, we can assign a, bin a four digit binary number to each region. In the middle, which is within our, sort of let's say this is our window, in the middle, we have all zeros. Okay. So what we can do is we can assign a bit code to every point. So if we have a line, we can assign a bit code to both endpoints of the line. And using that bit code, we can determine whether we need to clip or not. Okay, so we're going to get, we're introducing you to a couple of what we call bitwise operations. Uh, two bit codes are equal. If every pair of corresponding digits are equal, in other words, if they're the same. 
Okay, so um, that's not equal, obviously, because there's a zero on the end. Um, the, the both left-hand side and right-hand side are the same, so quite trivial, really. Bitwise AND, what we do is take each digit and we calculate the logical AND with its corresponding digit in the other number. So, for example, if I've got these two numbers here, okay, the first digit is a 1 in this number and a 1 in that number. So, remember your work from last year with logic? 1 AND 1 is a 1. So, AND returns a 1 if they're both 1. If either of them are zero or both zero, it returns a zero. Second location, we've got a zero there and a one there. So and is zero. <coughs> Third location, we've got a one and a zero. So it's zero. And the fourth location, both zeros. Uh, second example, zero and one, so it's zero. One and zero, zero, etc. So that's bitwise and. Bitwise or is the same, except we do the or logical operations. Remember or or return a one if if there's a one in either the first number or the second number. Okay, so we've got bitwise and and bitwise or. With that in mind, it's twenty past three, so I think I have a few of your Okay. Um how long do you want for your break? How long do you kill him? How long do you give you? An hour. Uh, what do you reckon? It's 20 past now. I'm going to return by 10 to. Okay, if you return by quarter to, actually, 25 minutes. Killian let you go at this point, did he? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have printed one out. Oh, you haven't sent it around. I'll send one around in a second. <coughs> Assume you're all here for the first one. Next week we'll go for the second one. It sits on top of C. Okay, so it's not on a lower level than C, but it sits on top. Um, it originally was Fortran. Um, it was, MATLAB was designed to be easier on Fortran. Um, but uh, yeah, it sits on top of C. Imagine. 